All right, hello everyone. Welcome back. Today uh, we're in the woods. Uh, I thought it'd be cool to check out the woods of the backyard that I used to grow up in because I thought that would be uh, one of the rooms I would have hung out in as a child. So I thought, you know, before this force goes anywhere, I'd like to catch some footage of it. So today we're going to tell stories about Barcelona and what that was like. Um, so for me, Barcelona was pretty cool because that was like the next place we went to after Nice and Mitch and Lisa had gone and left up north to go to northern France and Jen and I uh, departed and went to, to Barcelona and we arrived at Barcelona like late in the evening uh, so we thought at least uh, we showed up to Barcelona and it was like 11 30 and we were just checking into the hostel thinking okay we need to get some rest and and go to bed and we get in there and we sort of start settling in and all of a sudden one guy comes in, another guy comes in, another couple of people come in and it's like, holy crap, it's like 12 o'clock at night and these people are just like either waking up from their afternoon, late night naps before they went out on the town or they were just getting ready at midnight to go pre-drink to head downtown, uh, basically in Barcelona. So they've got tons of train lines similar to the tube in London and what happens is the, is the train lines shut down from like 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. I believe. It is. Uh, so pretty much people just go about their uh, their evening around that train schedule. So they just go out right before the train closes, party their brains out all night, and come home at 5 o'clock in the morning or 6 o'clock in the morning on that first train uh, to get ready for work, which I think is just absolutely insane. So we, we got into Barcelona. There's quite a few things uh, we did in Barcelona. So on the first day, I think I'm just going to read through the journal actually for the first time. Uh, we went to the Familia Sangrada, which is Gaudi's most famous work, uh, and it was in the enormous cathedral in the middle of the city. The stained glass and the interior architecture was out of this world, along with the incredible high ceilings. The exterior was still under construction, uh, but the detail in the metal work was insane. So the the, uh, the Sangria Familia, obviously, t till this day, is still under construction on the exterior, but the interior is done. I think they're trying to finish the exterior within the next couple of years here it was definitely looking like it was getting about that time and it was just an incredible piece of architecture that stood just like out on the horizon for miles in Barcelona it was like the most massive building in Barcelona by a long shot height wise width wise just square footage and everything and it just took up a huge chunk of land and it was just gorgeous um, and so it was one of the things it was really cool to see this kind of cathedral still being built because you got to see a lot of cathedrals that were, you know, already built, built hundreds of years ago. But this one was kind of a couple, like a hundred and some years old that was still being built. The architecture was still coming to fruition with modern day technology, uh, which I thought was really cool. And the next thing we did is we went for a hike uh, on that day. A oh, hike. We thought it was a hike. Uh, we went down to the tube after the Sangria Familia, and we bust over towards the outer skirts of town to get up to this panoramic viewpoint. And uh, we get off the sky train and we start walking, and it's fucking blaring hot. It's like part of my language, but it was so hot. It was ridiculous. And we, like, we can't make it up this hill. This is ridiculous. Like, we're going to need to get some drinks and some, like, freezies and stuff. So we stopped into a little shop and we bought some stuff uh, that would cool us down. And, about a minute or two after we had got out of that shop, we kind of stumbled upon our first little escalator elevator thing that heads up the hill. We're like, interesting, okay. So we obviously were like, well, why would we walk up the stairs? Let's just take the elevator. So we take this first elevator, and then we keep walking from another, walk across the street from the top of the elevator, and there's another elevator. We're like, okay, take another elevator. We're like, oh, there are two elevators. Like, we're a decent way up the hill. Like, that's that's sweet. This is a like public elevator to help people get up and down this hill. And we walk across the street onto the second elevator, and oh, there's a third elevator. We're like, hello, this is perfect. So we go up the third elevator, and uh, we're like, there's no way there's another elevator at the top of this thing. So we walk across the street, yeah, there's another elevator. Four elevators take us up to basically the base of what the park was. The park just was like the top of the hill. Um, so we got up to the essentially the top of the hill, had to walk up about t five, ten minutes up the top of this hill. And as we were walking up the top of the hill, we started to notice these little green parrot-style birds, which were like the pigeons of Barcelona. I swear, like, they were all over the place here. And it was just, like, crazy to see these tropical birds in, like, this city park. Like, it would be like going to Stanley Park and just seeing tropical birds everywhere. I mean, I guess you see crows and people are like, whoa, crazy crows and seals. But for us, it was like this wild, exotic green bird that was, you know, hanging out in this park so we, we headed up there and 
we got a chance to look at the panoramic view and it was absolutely stunning and there the sangria familia was you know standing high and tall uh, and then over to the left were those two business bullet kind of center area uh, and that was kind of the two main areas of Barcelona that you could see from a panoramic view it wasn't like they had this crazy uh, skyline or anything like that there was lots of like slum areas and low lower high rises and stuff like that which you kind of get to put in perspective that like you know even though you're in these touristy areas and you're like wow this is beautiful you're generally speaking tr training underground through behind all or under all of these you know lower income middle class income places where people live and getting a chance to see those neighborhoods when we walked up through the park or took the elevator i guess um was an interesting experience because you just again kind of have these flashes of like how lucky we are to be living in a place like this where there's just forest and greenery and big houses and lots of personal space and whatnot so uh the next thing that we did after that i think that we headed down uh back down towards the city center we went to the old bullfighting arena i didn't actually know this though, but the bullfighting they don't just wave the red flag every time the fight <laughs> and the bull passes they stab the bull with a little knife um, which I didn't know, so I actually, it was a it's, a, it's a huge form of animal cruelty, which I became aware of when I was in Barcelona, and they actually shut down the bullfighting arena a couple of years ago, five, six years ago, and they turned it into a massive shopping mall, so Jen and I got a chance to go into this famous bullfighting ring that, uh, for social reasons and for animal rights reasons, obviously got shut down, and is now this state-of-the-art, uh, mall so that was kind of the cool thing on, on that day and then the next day uh, in Barcelona we kind of just hung out and uh, we went to what does it say we did here uh, we went to the food market where they had some crazy things uh, at the food market from like cows tongues to full rabbits with eyes still in their eyes and they're just de-skinned it was some pretty terrifying things like massive prawns and fishes and all sorts of amazing fruits and vegetables and just the whole market was blustering um, and we just went through there and, and, and kind of snacked and picked at some food uh, that was absolutely delicious and then from there we headed over towards kind of the more touristy kind of shopping district area and we went into some pretty cool shops I remember I definitely got some presents for some people in those shops and uh and then we went to this uh chocolate and churros is one of the big things that they do in Barcelona and that's a, essentially just like melted chocolate and you get a chocolate bar you melt it and it was filled like the chocolate filled like a, a medium-sized coffee cup and then you got like this stack of churros and so Jen and I started dipping this cho like Swiss chocolate and churros and eating it. It was like, holy crap, realized it was like diabetes in a cup. We were like crawling out of the, the restaurant and being like, oh my God, I just want to go lay down somewhere. There's so much sugar in our bodies. It was like absolutely disgusting. It tasted really good, but it was one of those things that like, it was like you could split with two people. You should have been splitting with like five or six people and maybe it would have been, it would have got finished. Like it was just like a disgusting amount of sugar. Um, and then that night, from there, uh, continuing. Uh, then we went to the Montjuic Magic Fountains show. Uh, a couple of thousand people gathered around this majestic fountain by a beautiful flowing waterfall below a grand museum. Uh, the show ran right to sunset, into the night, and as the darkness crept in, the fountain got way more spectacular. So this fountain in this beautiful palace-like scenery with like big long runway of road up one way and a nice museum on the other side and this fountain that lit up in the middle and you'll see pictures obviously up there and the pictures just get better the, the fountain started the music started there's some street performing and as the sun went down the colors in the fountain started to flourish and it was just absolutely incredible like that was one of the coolest free entertainment experiences i've ever had in my entire life it was like worth going to again 100% and it was just fantastic probably better than the Bellagio light show in my opinion um, the light and, and water show at the Bellagio uh, wasn't as nice as the Montjuic Barcelona show my personal opinion uh, and the next thing we did uh, we went to the market we did all that stuff and uh, and then we went to the, the dinner we went for a nice dinner and, and an Appy's night kind of the next evening and we went to get some of these tapas which essentially are just like 
little mini hors d'oeuvres that they apparently are a big thing. I think that was more of like a tourist trap though in Barcelona than anything. It seemed, I don't know if they're really famous there or not because they were just like super overpriced for little chunks of food. Um, and then you could go, and then we went down and we walked through the restaurant district of Barcelona and we took a look at some of the set menus and eventually we made a decision and, and Jen and I just had a really nice kind of evening together uh, enjoying, what do we have? I had Apalas, Apalia, Apalia, which was like this seafood stir fry. Jen really didn't recommend I get it, but I was like, you know, I'm gonna get it anyways. And uh, it wasn't that great, so don't get it unless you really like seafood, because it has a very distinct, very sh like very strong seafood taste. Um, and after a while, it got to be a little bit much. So uh, anyways, long story short, we had a really nice evening and uh, we headed back to our room and I, I think that was it. We only really had two or three days in Barcelona and then after that we headed up to Dinan, France. So I'll tell you guys all about the adventures to Dinan, France next time. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel so make sure you're getting all these YouTube videos and more. I'm sure there'll be more videos to come. I've got a couple uh, extra days on my hands here so I'm definitely going to be filming some more footage. And uh, in the meantime, here's a look at what uh, the forest looks like when I grew up. And uh, this is the area that I grew up in the forest, sorry, and uh, it's a small forest, it's not very big, but it was it did the trick, and actually where we did our recording, there's the house right there, so we're not too far away, and right here where we did the recording, uh, I don't know if you guys can notice, so there's a little bit of a piece of wood nailed up there, and uh, there's some chunks of wood taken off of these trees, and I think, let's see if I can find some burnt wood. Uh, not sure if I can find any burnt wood, but this is exactly where I stand right here. This is where our tree fort used to be as kids. Um, we had a big tree fort here. There's some burnt wood if you can see it. I'll get the right lighting situation here. And it was uh, pretty crazy. Like I still have, I just came out here for the first time in a couple years and here's a nail from, from the tree fort. And uh, it was like, pretty decent sized tree fort um, as you can see there on that tree that's where the majority of the burning happened a kid in our neighborhood we wouldn't allow him to play on our tree fort so he reported us to the well he didn't report us he burnt the tree fort and uh, these neighbors over here noticed when we were away that there was a fire in their backyard called the fire department took the fire out and by the time we got back from our vacation our tree fort was gone so I guess kids that's a lesson not to uh, you know be welcoming to everyone who's uh, who's in the neighborhood and all the toys and all the things you build, especially on uh, public land, or else they might screw you over and not want you to uh, succeed in life or to have fun because they, they're missing out on the fun too. So keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and we will get more videos up and loaded. This is uh, kind of the path we took home. So there's our house again, back home. Quick little one, too. Alright guys, ciao ciao, have a good day.